Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Terrifying moments after a vehicle catches fire right outside of San Antonio International Airport. We have the latest from investigators on what happened and if there are any injuries. And new this morning, one person is in the hospital after an overnight crash on San Antonio's northwest side. We have those details just ahead. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, it is in the 70s right now. And please appreciate it because it's not going to stay like that all day. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday. It was so hot yesterday. Oh my gosh, I'm still sweating. Did you? <laughs> I haven't stopped sweating. <laughs> did you make it outside yesterday? I did. We went to um, the mall. Nice. So it's like just, but. Briefly, from that like 15 going yards. going from your car, mm -hmm. um, in, and we parked in the garage. Yeah. It was, an, and I left uh, wings in there from Pluckers. We didn't It was probably hotter than when you left oh it there. Oh my gosh, never leave garlic Parmesan wings <laughs> oh, in no. your it's car. Like, Sarah, it's like an air freshener like that you never wanted. And, like, 10 degrees outside and it's just like baked it's yeah like an oven baked opposite of an air freshener yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> an air stinkier or something but like sarah spivey you, you judged a barbecue competition i did i had so much fun mike taylor's barbecue competition benefited the salvation army boys and girls club i tried 12 different pork dishes who won well the 100 degree heat i do not know who won <laughs> But here's the thing. I, I was out there in the middle of the heat and had to park far away. And Sarah, you are so right. That that walk it's, with the concrete and the asphalt just. And like, the 12 dishes of pork. You had meat I feel sweats. Like, are we being dramatic? Are we being dramatic? Yeah, well, but we're still sweating. Here's the thing, guys. Today is going to be just as hot as cool. yesterday. And we can, you know, we can laugh about the heat. But, but in all seriousness, you're going to want to make sure that you have a way to stay cool today. Because just like yesterday, temperatures are going to be anywhere from 102 to 107 degrees around south central Texas. Forecasting a high of 104 in San Antonio. So yes, it is going to be dangerously hot today, especially between 1 to 7 p.m. Satellite showing a few morning clouds starting to work their way in, but generally temperatures are in the 70s, at least temporarily. 75 New Braunfels, 76 in Hondo, 74 in New Valde. It's 82 in Del Rio, 77 in San Antonio. Let's go ahead and zoom into the metro area. It's 78 in Canyon Lake, 75 in Castroville, 75 at Stinson, 76 in Pleasanton. And as I I mentioned today we're going to quickly warm up a few morning clouds early this morning hot and breezy though today by noon will be at 92 degrees south winds gusting up to 25 so we are going to have that breeze today and then 104 for the heat uh, this afternoon uh, tonight the sun will set at 834 it's still going to be hot by 10 will still be at 92 degrees. So I mentioned that those winds are going to help us out a little bit, but that's not the only thing that's going to be blowing into uh, South Central Texas. Saharan dust makes a return today. I'll tell you what that means for air quality coming up in a bit. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Right now we want to get to late breaking news from the city's north side. We're hearing reports of a shooting three people shot. Yeah, we have a crew there now. If we can actually get that live picture up, if we have. This is our photographer, Stephen Chavez. He is out live at the scene near Blanco Road in Loop 410. We're hearing reports of a shooting three people shot at this time. So right now, that is the vehicle that was shot at. Police on the scene confirming it has been riddled with bullets. We know those three people shot. We're being told women in their 20s transported to the hospital in critical condition. At this time, that is the information we have. We don't have any information on the suspects, if they have a description, um, if this was a drive-by shooting, but we will keep you updated as we get that information throughout the morning. Also new this morning, one person is in the hospital after a crash on I-10 Access Road coming in from Callahan. This was a scene around 2.30 this morning. Police say a driver was speeding on that Access Road and crashed into a white vehicle, which then crashed into an SUV. One of the people in the first vehicle that was hit was transported to the hospital in stable condition. Police on the scene say speed and alcohol were factors in this crash and charges are pending results of a DWI test and the driver who allegedly caused this crash. 
So we've been watching gas prices and we've been watching them rise exponentially over the last several weeks. According to AAA this morning, well, the average price here in San Antonio, $4.67 for a gallon of regular. Mm, and that pain at the pump now leading to more problems, people stealing gas from others. That's exactly what, what's in, what one San Antonio man says happened while he was at work. John Paul Barajas explains. There's just no respect. I mean, no, no embarrassment stealing from other people that have worked so hard for what they have. Rob, while trying to make an honest living, this woman tells us her dad is a cross guard at Kate Shank Elementary on the southeast side. On the last day of school, back on June 2nd, around 730 in the morning while he was working, someone drilled a hole in his gas tank and siphoned his gas from his truck that was parked just across the street from the school. He saw the guy get off his truck, but he didn't know what he was doing up until my dad started walking up the sidewalk and he noticed he was under his truck. And when he yelled at him, the guy got up, left a gas can, left a piece of the hose there and also uh, a funnel. Security cameras from a neighboring business got video of a potential suspect. We're blurring his face because we are waiting for official confirmation from SAPD, but he's seen with two gas cans in his hands, as well as at least one, if not more, in the bed of his white pickup. The woman adds in total, the thief cost her father around $300 in damages. We were able to help my dad get everything, the parts or whatever, financially anything that he needed because they are like on a fixed income. So, of course, their bills come first, but, you know, he needs his truck. She says she doesn't think her dad was the only victim that day and fears this person will do this again if he isn't caught. Everybody be vigilant of where you park. You know, just be aware of all your surroundings. Keep your eyes and ears open. And we need to just watch out for each other. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Well, scary moments at the San Antonio airport as a driver catches a flaming car on cell phone video. Just take a look at this video right now on your screen. You can see those flames shooting out the windows. This happened around 10 last night towards the entrance of the airport. We're told police did take the driver of that burning car into custody to ask him questions. He is not under arrest and no one was hurt in this incident. It's still unclear what exactly sparked that fire. Now the latest in Uvalde where students and teachers who were killed at Robb Elementary, they continue to be remembered and laid to rest. Today there is a visitation and rosary for 10 year old Tess Mata at Rushing at Estes Knowles Mortuary. Her family says she was an athlete at heart. She enjoyed softball, soccer and gymnastics. She'll be buried tomorrow at Hillcrest Cemetery. And in the aftermath of Uvalde, thousands of people taking to the streets protesting against gun violence. A March for Our Lives rallies happening across the country and happening across San Antonio. Take a look. This is video from downtown just yesterday. This march began at Milan Park and ended right in front of City Hall. It was actually the second March for Our Lives rally here in the Alamo City. This one, though, bringing attention to the Uvalde school massacre and the Buffalo supermarket shooting. It's been kind of an international international phenomenon having these marches and to be able to partake in this here in San Antonio, here in Texas, where I think gun control is one of the more prevalent issues um, is so, so important. So what we're hoping today is that we're building momentum for this movement for other cities to host rallies. So the March for Our Lives marches actually originated in 2018 after the Parkland school shooting. Remember, 17 students and staff members were shot and killed. Other top stories we were following this morning. It's been nearly a year since that deadly and terrifying condo collapse in Surfside, Florida. Here's the thing. Investigators still don't know why it happened. Well, and federal investigators say there are likely many factors that led to that structure failure on June 24th of last year. Chaplain Tower South, a 13 story oceanfront residential building in Miami Dade County partially collapsed overnight in total. 98 people were killed that day. And in Los Angeles, California, nine people are recovering this morning after they were hit by a truck. The driver of that truck told LAPD officers he swerved to avoid a gunman. So police investigated that claim of a gunman, but they found no evidence that a firearm was even involved. The truck crashed into a sidewalk. It hit street vendor stalls. Of the nine people hit by the truck, six had to go to the hospital. One is in serious condition. Two of those people who were injured, just eight years old. Time now, 6.09, 77 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, a massive haul for Ooh. a Texas angler. May have just broken a record. We'll explain in just a bit. Is that Mark Austin? <laughs>
<laughs> he wishes. <laughs> All right, just ahead, we're going to take you to the west side, west of downtown San Antonio. We've been talking about this project for so long, and there is a new segment of it. We're going to explain. Okay, did it go down in degrees? I thought it was 77 at the top. Of the it top. was. Oh, wow. So this is it. For this the, is the win. Cool. <laughs> go outside and enjoy it now. If you're like Sarah, Spivey, and I, who haven't stopped sweating since <laughs> <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> she'll have our forecast when we come back. West side of San An downtown San Antonio is undergoing a transformation that should revitalize that area. That is the goal. Bear County officials and the San Antonio River Authority unveiling the next steps of this highly anticipated San Pedro Creek Culture Park. So take a look. We got a look at the latest progress. The second segment, because remember we covered the first one extensively, it's going to include a community gathering space around the preserved historic foundations of the St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church, the Soap Factory, and the Almo Ice and Brewing Company right at the corner of Houston and Cameron Streets. So the construction also includes five new bridges, an interactive oh. sculpture, a 250-foot waterfall. Beautiful. Dang, and a five-panel ceramic mural displaying San Antonio's and Bear County's history. City leaders say the project ultimately connects the city's present with the past and gives life to the west side of downtown. You walk that, don't you? Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, you know what else is beautiful? What? What we're about to show. What a catch. <laughs> a Texas angler may have broken a state and, yes, even a world record, reeling in a monster oh of a gosh. fish in Why Port so A last bad? weekend. <laughs> so, Braden Sharon, he caught a gigantic snapper waning. Ooh. 137 pounds. Good Lord. All right. The all tackle world record for Kubra, Kubera? Sure. Kubera snappers. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not an angler. I don't know. Was set, was last set in June of 2007 in Garden Bank, Louisiana by Marin Rose, according to the International Game Fish Association. Her cash. Her catch weighed in at 124 pounds. You can read more about this story. He's holding a 137 pound fish. Like it's nothing. And also like 14 pounds is a big difference. So he cleared the world record. 137 pounds. That, wow. That's an, that's an adult. <laughs> Here's the thing though, Sarah Spivey, being next to the water, what a weekend to catch. I so know. why doesn't someone get out there and break the record today? Well, hey, why not? But let me make a suggestion okay. as the weather mom of the group. I love it. <laughs> uh, put on sunscreen yes. <laughs> because the sun is going to be out in a fierce way today. Take a look at our heat warnings and advisories. All of South Central Texas, either an excessive heat warning or an advisory. Now, an excessive heat warning, you'll notice, is around the metro area, really Primarily, temperatures all across the KSAT 12 viewing area are going to range anywhere from 102 to 109. But around the metro area, where a lot of people are out and about, around a lot of concrete, a lot of asphalt, that's where we've got the excessive heat warning until 7 p.m. today and a heat advisory elsewhere. All in all, the colors don't necessarily matter. What matters is the fact that it's going to be hot all around South Central Texas and for most of the entire state of Texas and Oklahoma for that matter. Texas is sizzling this afternoon. Take a look at that. 104 in San Antonio, 106 in Junction, 105 in Austin, 103 in Dallas, 108 in Abilene, and 106 in El Paso. Everybody is going to be cranking that AC. That power grid is going to be working, working in overtime today. So we'll be keeping an eye on things, but generally CPS and ERCOT have promised that we have enough energy for the day. So that's good. Heat high in place overhead. That is is why we are so hot. High pressure system creating sinking air sends all of the rain up and over this heat high. So that's why we're dry and hot in San Antonio. Now that heat high will be pushing off to the east during the middle of the week. So we're going to shave off a few degrees here and there by the end of the week. But still 99 is hot. 98 is hot. We're just not going to be at 104 degrees like we will be today throughout the middle of this upcoming week. One thing to keep in mind is that Saharan dust is going to be making a return to South 
Central Texas today. This is an annual occurrence. If you are new to the San Antonio area, this happens every year for us. You can see dust from the Sahara Desert is uh, working its way all the way across the Atlantic into South Central Texas. We'll see more moderate dust plume tomorrow, Monday around 5 p.m. Tuesday it'll thin out a little bit, and then by Wednesday and Thursday we'll see more dense cloud of Saharan dust moving into the area. So what does that mean for you? Well, we oftentimes just see a haze on the horizon with the dust, but if you're particularly sensitive to the dust, the air quality out there uh, may cause you to have some allergy like symptoms. Right now, though, that air quality is fine. It's moderate. Most days uh, the air quality is either good or moderate. So. Once we see that dense cloud of dust, it might become unhealthy for those who are sensitive to it. But again, today things should be just fine. You'll notice that haze on the horizon. This happens every year. Uh, right now it's 77 degrees outside. Winds are from the southeast at 10 miles per hour. That's something you'll notice too. It's going to be breezy today in addition to the heat. 76 in Hondo, 74 in Kerrville, 75 in New Braunfels this morning. It's 82 already in Del Rio. Get outside, do things now while you can, because temperatures are just going to go up from here. We've got a few clouds out there right now, but we'll have mostly sunny skies by about 10 o'clock. It'll be 85 degrees by noon, totally sunny, 92 around lunch. So if you're planning on being outside around lunch, it's going to be hot. And then even into the afternoon, temperatures are going to climb to 104 degrees this afternoon. If you're going to be outside, use the sunscreen. Find some shade, find a way to stay cool. 105 at Rio Medina, 106 in Hondo, 105 in Zagin, 105 in New Braunfels. It'll be 102 in Bulverde, 107 in Pleasanton, 106 in Floresville, 106 in Givaldi. As that heat high moves off to the east Wednesday through Saturday, there could be a few coastal showers closer to Corpus Christi, those areas. There is an off chance, only a 10% chance that one or two of those could make it to the Alamo City. So not good rain chances. Uh, there, but there will be some coastal showers. The big weather story for us is going to be the heat. Even though we'll go down to 99 degrees, that is still hot and we'll still have to deal with humidity. So the heat and the Saharan dust are the big story in the forecast over the next few days. Coming up, I'll have a look at your poolside forecast, Max and Sarah. So we're officially giving permission to all the dads that want to wake up the whole neighborhood to mow the lawn right now. <laughs> yeah, right now. Yeah, right do now. it right now. It's okay. Wake you can everyone blame, up. You can blame us. Yeah, <laughs> we'll take the blame. Time now, just about 620, 76 degrees out. All right, Max. All right, we got the Rangers first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm locking in right now. The Astros will win today. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, we got Justin out there on the mound. I'm calling it. Didn't work out so well yesterday, no. uh, but we're going to explain what happened and what comes next. Good morning and welcome back. Not that great a morning if you are an Astros fan. The Rangers and the Astros looking to bounce back yesterday afternoon. So we start with the Rangers. They were on the road taking on the White Sox in Chicago early on. All White Sox. Now, Texas wouldn't be able to get on the board until the fifth inning. And once they did, they couldn't be stopped. Rangers winning big, beating the White Sox in Chicago. The final from this one, Rangers 11, White Sox 9. Texas and Chicago finishing the series this afternoon. An early one, 110. And here we go. That's what I've been complaining about all morning. Different story for Houston Astros fans. Astros playing host to the Marlins yesterday. Miami getting on the board early. And Houston couldn't get hardly anything on offense going. This one pretty much summed up by the uh, fifth inning. Final for Minute Maid Park. Marlins five, Astros one. That's now Houston's third straight loss. So the Astros have one more shot at Miami this afternoon, 1.10 p.m. And I'm locking in a W. Okay, now that you just said that. No, you're it's happening. It. Okay. Nope. I'm telling you right now, Justin Verlander pitching, we're good to go. Okay. Yeah, lock it in. See you tomorrow morning. <laughs> Can't wait to be wrong. 6 of 24, 76 degrees out. I mean, I want the Astros to win. I know. Okay. You just don't want me to win. I get it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. And still ahead on GMSA, we'll show you the big celebration all for one brave little boy. Good morning and welcome back. Beating cancer, a monumental task for anyone especially a child. And this is a task just about complete for a San Antonio seven year old. So two of Jarvis Henderson's seven years of life have been bad, spent battling leukemia. Now that he is nearing the end of that treatment, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and its 
Light the Night campaign planned a big caravan Aww. celebration yesterday to celebrate his bravery. It's going to make me feel really happy because I love parade. A long journey, <laughs> but we are so happy that we are at the end of that journey. That puts a smile on your face. So sweet. Jarvis's mom says that Jarvis's treatment will be over by the end of the month or in the beginning of July. Now that he's finally done with the treatment, Jarvis says he would like to go to Disney World. Nice. I hope you get to do that. Jarvis. It's like after you win the World Series or Super Bowl, where are you going? I want to go to Disney World. Yeah, doing it right. Time now, 628, 76 degrees out. All right, well, as of this morning, people visiting the U.S. no longer have to provide a negative COVID-19 test. We'll tell you what health experts are saying about our current phase of the pandemic. And our great grad series continues this morning. A young man who helped shape the future of a local university. We'll explain. Good morning and welcome back. We want to get right back to that late breaking news from the city's north side. We're hearing reports of a shooting. We have a crew there right now. Our photographer Stephen Chavez has a live picture for us. We're at the scene near Blanco Road and Loop 410. This is what we know right now. We know three women in their 20s were in a car. All three are in the hospital at this time, and we're told they are in critical condition. So I was talking to Stephen throughout the morning. He said that he could count as many as 34 shell casings on the ground. And you see the white vehicle right there still parked in the middle lane. You can see riddled with gunfire. We're told at last check, still no suspects in custody. Police still trying to figure out what exactly led up to this. You can see all the shell casings, all the evidence markers on the ground. Now, clearly, that area is going to be shut down for the foreseeable future as the investigation continues. And we're going to be staying on this throughout the morning, so stay with us on air and online as more updates become available. But for now, we want to check our forecasts. Triple digits yesterday. What can we expect today, Sarah? Triple digits today. Ah. In fact, wait. it's going to be just as hot today as it was yesterday. And... Uh, be Max and Sarah, we actually spent some time out in the heat yesterday and whew, man, you really do need to find a way to stay cool. This is, you know, we're used to this kind of heat in South Central Texas, but still is going to cause a bit of a headache out there today. All right, take a look outside with temperatures right now is the time to get out, walk your dog, get some exercise in early this morning because it's only 77 degrees at the airport right now. Still muggy as I'll get out. 76 in Converse, 76 in Hondo, 74 Bandera, 73 in Comfort, and 76 in Seguin. But uh, later on today, we're going to quickly see those temperatures rise. You might want to be by the pool this Sunday. It is going to be a nice day for the pool as long as you lather up with that sunscreen. Winds are going to be from the south gusting up to 25 miles per hour. So after you come out of the pool, uh, that gust will be nice. Uh, those winds will be nice. Totally sunny, 0% chance for rain. By noon, we'll be at 92, by 299, and we're forecasting a high temperature of 104 once again today. We got up to 104 yesterday as well. UV index is going to be extreme. So as I mentioned, lather up on that sunscreen. Uh, we're going to be looking at skin damage time of less than 10 minutes if you're not careful out there with that total sunshine. Elsewhere, it'll be 105 in New Braunfels and Seguin, 106 in Hondo, 102 in Bernie, 103 in Canyon Lake, 107 in Pleasant. 106 in Floresville, 106 in the Nixon Smiley area. All right, I want to show you, look at your screen. This is a, a satellite view of the entire globe here. And you can see, here's Africa. You see that haze there, that brownish haze? That is Saharan dust from the Sahara Desert. And it is in the Gulf of Mexico. Saharan dust is going to make a return today and stick with us all week long. I'll tell you what that means for air quality. And of course, we'll take a look at whether or not we could see any chance for rain in the coming days. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, police investigating, trying to figure out why two suspects fired their weapons at vehicles yesterday on Highway 90. This happening just near Southwest 36th Street. So police, they were alerted when an SUV with two people inside called for help at a gas station right after getting off the highway. So those people who were shot at, they told police what had happened. One victim was actually shot in the leg, the other shot in the back. Now we're told they're taken to the hospital. Not too long after, police heard a report of another vehicle damaged by bullets. Luckily, no one inside that one was hurt. Eventually, police were able to make an arrest. Two people were arrested from a suspect's vehicle after it crashed on the highway. Well, in Houston, the family members who were killed allegedly by an escaped murder suspect have been laid to rest. The funeral service for five members of the Collins family took place 
Yesterday in northwest Houston, a grandfather and his four grandchildren were found dead at their ranch just over a week ago. The escaped inmate Gonzalo Lopez is believed to be responsible. Lopez was later killed during a shootout with law enforcement officers in Jordanton. So the support for the victims of the Robb Elementary school shooting in Uvalde, the support continues to pour in, including right here in San Antonio. The San Antonio Zoo honoring the 19 students and two teachers who were shot and killed, and they're honoring them with a special tribute. The zoo's five-story parking garage, it has been lit up in the Robb Elementary school colors each night since May 26, just two days after that massacre. Now, Robb Elementary students and teachers had actually visited the San Antonio Zoo just one week before that devastating day. The tributes to the victims will continue at the zoo through at least June 15th. We have this full article and the names right now. Just go to KSAT.com. Well, meanwhile, the National Governors Association says it's forming a working group of governors to come up with recommendations to stop mass shootings following the Texas school massacre. Now reaching an agreement could be a tall order, given that the nation's governors have been divided along partisan lines on how to approach issues of gun control and school safety. So two governors told the White House in a letter that their group is creating a panel of six to ten governors to look at the issue. Their letter left open the possibility the recommendations could include gun control propo proposals. And the CDC's requirement for proof of a negative COVID-19 test or documentation of recovery before boarding a flight to the U.S. has officially expired. So the agency says the requirement isn't really needed at this phase in the pandemic, mainly because of vaccines and effective treatments. Meanwhile, more data on vaccines for children under the age of five is set to be reviewed in the next coming days. Here's ABC's Ty Hernandez with the story. As of today, international travelers will no longer need to show proof of a negative COVID test to enter the U.S. It's welcome news for the travel industry as the summer vacation season gears up. A lot of people didn't want to travel internationally because of the testing requirement. This provides them with peace of mind so that they know when they're traveling they can make it home. I'm thankful that we are relaxing, that uh, I'm vaccinated, I feel good. Well, it wouldn't be my preference, I would prefer to have testing still. The CDC says the requirement is no longer necessary thanks to vaccines and treatments. But still, more than 53 million eligible Americans remain unvaccinated. Young children are still not able to get vaccinated, but that could soon change. This week, the FDA and CDC are set to review data from Moderna and Pfizer on their vaccines for children under five. If they sign off this week, vaccinations could start soon after. Realistically, it means we could see shots in arms of kids under five as early as the week of June 20th. Good news for parents anxious to get their children vaccinated. As new data reveals, more than two-thirds of Americans live in a county with a high or medium COVID risk level. Country is currently seeing an average of 110,000 new cases a day. Health officials caution the actual number of cases could be higher. Many people testing at home and not reporting the results. We will see surges this summer, and I'm especially concerned about places that have lower vaccine uptake. A recent surge in the Northeast is beginning to ease, but Florida, Arizona, and California are now seeing a rise in the number of cases. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. We've been talking a lot about gas prices and inflation, obviously hurting all of us and local families in different ways, but it's also hurting local organizations who has a mission to help others. So the San Antonio Food Bank serves 90,000 people every week. And this rise in gas, rise in other prices, not making their mission any easier. That is why later this morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., we're going to be joined by Eric Cooper, president and CEO of the Food Bank. We're going to be talking about what the need looks like, these obstacles from inflation, gas prices, and new programs this summer, how you can help out. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit those questions right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com and join us in about an hour and 20 minutes. Here are our full discussion. Time now, 640, 76 degrees out. So head on GMSA, the story of a young man who helped shape the future of a local university. And speaking of local, let's take a live look out there right now, 76 degrees. Did you make it through yesterday? I made it and then okay. I got home and my thermostat was at okay. 77. Okay, that's it's good. Like, no, but it, but it was actually at 80. It couldn't get oh. down. It's too hot. We're gonna be full forecast in just a bit.
Well, Texas A&M San Antonio became a standalone university in the fall of 2009, and since then it has grown dramatically by 196%. So in today's great graduate segment, we want to introduce you to Adam Montemayor, a Texas A&M San Antonio grad who helped shape the school and bring sports to this young campus. I still remember when we first had our interview, I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> I first met Adam his freshman year on campus when the school first opened their dorms. Adam would go on to be a big voice for the Jaguars. And I, as a tour guide on campus, I primarily want to expose that, that you are always welcome. We are all nice here. Um, we are very caring. And Adam and the school have grown since his first day on campus. So now we are actually in uh, intercollegiate sports in men and women's soccer, men's golf, and women's softball. On top of being a tour guide to welcome future students, Adam was one of the leaders on campus who has left his mark. Make some changes um, positively for the better of the university. And so over the past couple of years, those changes have, um, that I've advocated for have definitely been put into effect. Adam used his voice and his leadership to help raise the issue of sports and bring them to Texas A&M San Antonio. What I uh, and my other fellow colleagues were wanting was sports. Sports is a very demanding thing that everyone is wanting. So some colleagues of mine, we went ahead and advocated for bringing on our first intercollegiate sports to campus. Adam has made tremendous strides. His perseverance has been amazing to watch. And Adam's journey was not easy. When he graduated, he was still taking speech therapy. So Adam was um, seen by military doctors uh, since he was five. And when he turned 12, they started with the braces just to start the process. And when he was in ROTC in high school, they ended up having to break his jaw in order to go ahead and accommodate his his mouth, his, his jaw, so that he could speak better. It's so amazing how he went from speech therapy to basically being a speaker of the campus. Oh yeah. Well, you know, he's also, he's, he plays a trombone, plays a trombone. Adam is a star on and off campus, and he is now ready for the next step. I am seeking on applying to government jobs in the field of IT. All right, so it was such an awesome story. It was funny because his, his mom actually reached out to me. I had met Adam his first day on campus when they just brought the dorms in. Stop. And she full emailed me, story. full circle. I love that. And the first line of the story was him being like, I had no idea who you were. <laughs> and I was like, well, four years later, he's entering the career field, and here we are. He's being so successful. Well, we wish you the best. All right. You know what else we wish the best? The forecast. Well, I wish oh, everyone I thought you were going to say me. <laughs> of course, Sarah Spivey. Okay. We want to give a shout out to the Aggies, by the way, locking in a trip to the World Series, College World Series. Hey, whoop. There you go. That's for all my Aggie friends. <laughs> is it real? I mean, they're playing. Is it? I was watching those mm -hmm. games. Yeah. They, they cannot be playing in the same heat, right? What do you mean? Texas A&M against Texas? No, when, where they're playing. They weren't playing in Oh, Texas. no, 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 no. It goes to Omaha. That's where yeah, the College World like, Series is. It is, is way yeah. cooler over there. Yeah. Although Omaha is still being impacted by the heat high, too. And, and, you know, that heat high has made us very hot over the last few days. Yesterday, look at the high temperatures yesterday. We got up to 104 in San Antonio. That is 12 degrees above the average. We should be looking at a high temperature of 92. It was 106 in Del Rio, 105 in Hondo, 104 in New Braunfels, 102 in Kerrville, 106 in Pleasant, 109 in Catula. Well, today, not going to be all that different. In fact, we're forecasting a high temperature of 104 in San Antonio as well. So today is going to be just as hot, just as dangerously hot, too. It'll be 107 in Del Rio, 105 in New Braunfels, 102 in Kerrville, 106 in Hondo, and 107 in Pleasanton. Because of that, we have got excessive heat warnings and heat advisories in place all across South Central Texas. Excessive heat warning along that I-35 corridor, a lot more population along that I-35 corridor 
corridor, a lot more uh, concrete, asphalt, those kinds of things. So you'll really feel the heat in the city in a major way. But honestly, everybody across South Central Texas, even in the more rural areas and up in the hill country, going to be dealing with excessive dangerous heat. We've got that excessive heat warning, that heat advisory in place until 7 p.m. tonight. 77 degrees outside right now, the coolest part of the day. Get out there right now. Uh, although it is humid, at least you aren't having to deal with that major heat. Winds are from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. That breeze is going to be our friend today. We're going to see winds uh, gusting up to about 25 miles per hour. Outside temperatures around the area, 73 in New Valley, 73 in Kerrville, 75 in New Braunfels, 79 in Gonzales, 77 in Kennedy, 79 in Eagle Pass. Taking a closer metro view here at 75 in Castroville, 76 at Simpson, 79 in Gonzales, 70 in Rio in Medina. Stepping outside of the door in Bernie, 72 degrees. But we're quickly going to warm up. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. By 9, we'll already be in the 80s. By 10, 85 degrees. Winds are not all that strong out there right now, but throughout the the afternoon we'll see those winds pick up a little bit. It's going to be 92 already by noon. So if you have outdoor lunch plans, brunch plans, sit by a fan, sit in the shade because it's going to be hot. And then as we head into the mid afternoon and uh, later afternoon, that's when we're really going to feel that heat. We're already are we will already be at 101 degrees by 3 p.m. with a few more hours of warming to go. So 104, 5 and 6 p.m. with those gusty winds up to about 25 miles per hour. We mentioned the heat high, you can see it. Notice that all of the rain moves in a clockwise pattern around Texas. You can see that heat high right there over uh, the panhandle, pushing down on the atmosphere, increasing the heat. Now that high is going to move off to the east, so we'll shave off a few degrees tomorrow. It's still going to be 101, and by Tuesday, 100 degrees, and with that high moving off even further to the east, 99 on Wednesday. So at least we'll be able to shave off a few degrees there. Air quality outside, it's moderate. It's okay. It's not that bad. But today you're going to notice that that uh, Saharan dust is going to start to really enter into the atmosphere, and it's going to be with us for most of the week. Uh, take a look at that plume of dust really starting to uh, become more moderate and dense by tomorrow afternoon. You'll notice a haze on the horizon, especially uh, by Wednesday and Thursday as well, when we'll see more of a dense plume. Now, for most people, this is just going to result in a haze on the horizon. But if you're particularly sensitive to the dust, you will have to deal with some light allergy-like symptoms throughout the week. But we will be seeing that uh, cloud of Saharan dust really thin out by the end of this upcoming weekend, but it'll be with us all week long. As far as rain chances, doesn't look all that good. We'll be seeing maybe some coastal showers Wednesday through Saturday, but it's it's going to stay relatively dry around San Antonio. No hope for rain over the next seven days. Sarah and Max. <sighs> Garden still left? Uh, no. Oh, OK. So someone, up. someone emailed me about hand watering mm -hmm. and yes, hand watering works for like okay. the potted plants and under the porch in the shade. But the ones that are just getting like baked in the sun or the grass or right? the grass. Yeah, I mean, it, it helps a little bit. Yeah, I mean, a hundred and what? Six? No, it doesn't help. Time now. <laughs> 652, 76 degrees out. All right, Max. You, you'll, you'll tell me that the Astros are going to win, but the Astros are going to win. Who's going to win this game? So the Astros are coming off three losses, and Justin Verlander's pitching. It's a lock today. And, and Plus, they're playing a worse team. This is an even matchup. We're going to give you a preview, so I don't just keep ranting about the Astros or Texas A&M baseball. <laughs> we'll be back in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back. We are in the midst of the NBA Finals. KSAT 12, obviously home for the Finals. Celtics, Warriors. All evened up two apiece, best of seven series, so really it's now a best of three series. Both clubs have the weekend off. Then we got game five tomorrow night in San Fran. Championship still up for grabs. History, though, tends to favor the winner of game five, so it should be a good one. Celtics Warriors tip off tomorrow night, 8 p.m. right here, case at 12. I'm picking the Warriors. Are you going to stay up to actually watch this game? It's a little late. It's so late. Can't we just have like 5 p.m. tip-offs every day? Oh, my gosh. I, yeah, I can't stay up the late either. Time now, 6.56, 76 degrees out. We'll be right back after this. Before you go, we want to get back to that late-breaking news from the city's north side where police are investigating a shooting. So we're going to take you to a live picture right here. This is Blanco and Loop 410 is the access road. Right now we know three women in their 20s. They were in that white sedan in the middle of the road, riddled with bullets, at least 49 evidence markers on the street. Three of those women in the hospital at last check 
in critical condition. So police say there are no suspects in custody at this time. Obviously, this area is going to be closed off for a while, and we'll bring you those updates throughout the morning right here on GMSA and online. And coming up at 8, I'm going to have another recap of how hot it's going to be today. That's fair. Awesome, Sarah. Hour long break. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you at 8. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This morning on the city's north side, a vehicle riddled with bullets sending three women to the hospital. We have the latest on their condition and we'll tell you if any arrests have been made. And a drive down Highway 90 yesterday ended with two people in the hospital and two people behind bars. It was a terrible situation of road rage. We're going to have the latest from police. As gas prices continue to soar, thieves aren't targeting gas stations. They're targeting your gas tanks. The story of how thieves stole one man's gas while he was on the job, that's coming up. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City. All right, it looks calm and quiet there now. 77. <sighs> Enjoy it while it lasts. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. It is June 12th. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday with us. Happy Sunday. Yesterday. It was hot. It was hot. That's pretty much all I got to say about that. Did you did you actually go outside yesterday? Uh, momentarily. There was some walking involved. From, but uh, what was the distance? Well, enough to break a sweat, but you know, for yesterday's so temperatures. So from your car, to, <laughs> car the to the front building. door. <laughs> well, I got to say, kudos to Sarah Spivey because she was out and about a lot yesterday, involving a barbecue contest for a good call. Yeah. Yeah. The Mike Taylor barbecue contest it, uh, benefited the Boys and Girls Club of San Antonio put on by the Salvation Army. But yes, it was hot. It was very odd. I was out there close to one o'clock, not even during the peak heat of the day, and it was difficult to be outside. We, thankfully, we had some fans. We had some shade. So if you're going to spend time outside, that's the way to do it. Plenty of sunscreen too. take a look outside for the high temperatures forecast for this afternoon. Yesterday we were at 104 today 104 ditto day in San Antonio 105 in New Braunfels. It'll be 102 in Kerrville 107 in Del Rio 108 in Catula 102 in Kerrville outside right now. This is the coolest part of the day. All right, we've got temperatures in the mid 70s 77 in San Antonio 79 in Pleasant 77 in New Braunfels 81 in Del Rio. I'm going to zoom in here because you can see that there are some morning clouds out out there right now. These are very temporary. We're going to see these clear out of here by mid morning. We're going to have mostly sunny skies. It's 76 at Port SA, 76 in Converse, 77 in Canyon Lake. Wake up temperature in Bernie, 73 degrees. Here's the forecast though for the day. As I mentioned, we're going to clear out quickly 85 at 10, 92 around noon. Hot and breezy with gusts up to 25 miles per hour and then dangerous heat mainly between 1 to 7 p.m. That's when we have excessive heat warnings, heat advisories in place. And even after sunset at 834, it's still going to be hot 92 at 10 o'clock. I mentioned those breezes. Thankfully, we're going to have some gusts up to 25 miles per hour if you're outside today. But that's not the only thing blowing into South Central Texas. We've got to talk about Saharan dust to two, the annual return of Saharan dust. I'll tell you what that means for air quality in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We're beginning with a developing story on the city's northwest side. One person is dead and two others taken to the hospital following a shooting involving an AK-47 at a quick trip. So clearly still an investigation ongoing. There's actually an active police presence going on right now. It's happening at Blanco and Loop 410. This is a live look at the scene. Uh, we have a crew out there. We're being told at Castle Hills Police. They're looking over that vehicle, that white sedan in the middle of the road that was involved. And this is what we know so far. Police tell us three women believed to be in their 20s. They were shot at. As we mentioned off the top, one of those women now dead. The other two taken to University Hospital in critical condition. At last check, one of them going into surgery. The other woman's condition still unknown. And right now, still no suspect in custody. The police say they were alerted by a homeless man that something was happening at the QT. When they arrived, they found the women, all three with serious gunshot wounds. Police say they found 49 to 50 shell casings on the ground and say a 9 millimeter and an AK-47 were involved. Right now, Castle Hills police are investigating, trying to figure out exactly what happened. We will continue to follow this developing story and bring you updates on air and online.
A case of road rage on the southwest side ends with two people in the hospital and two people in custody. So take a look. This was a scene yesterday. This is Highway 90 near Southwest 36th Street. Officers on the scene telling us the victims called police from a gas station and they called them after they got shot off, shot at. Now, two people had told the police they had been shot. One person shot in the leg, the other shot in the back, both taken to the hospital. Now, a short time later, after the initial cause of the shooting, police got another report of another vehicle hit by bullets. Fortunately, in that circumstance, no one was injured. When police were able to make an arrest. They arrested two people from the suspected vehicle after it crashed on the highway. We were still waiting to learn the names of the suspects. Well, scary moments at the San Antonio airport caught on camera. A man's car catches fire while he's still in it, but he's able to jump out and escape the flames. Just take a look at this video. You can see flames shooting out the windows. This happened around 10 o'clock last night towards the entrance of the airport. We're told police did take the driver of the burning car into custody to ask him questions. He is not under arrest and no one was hurt in this incident. It's still unclear what exactly sparked that fire. Well, we continue to keep Uvalde and the families of the victims of that deadly school shooting in our thoughts. So today, a visitation and rosary will be held for Tess Mata at Rushing Knowles Mortuary. Her funeral set for tomorrow, 10 a.m. at Sacred Heart Catholic Church. Yesterday, funeral services held for 10-year-old Alexandria Rubio. Well, gas prices, it's something we talk about a lot. Gas exponentially more expensive now than it was just last year. And with the price here in Bear County teetering on $5 a gallon for regular, some people decided not to pay the increase, but rather take yours. Thieves are siphoning gas from people's vehicles. That's exactly what happened to one San Antonio man while he was at work. The victim's daughter, who wanted to remain anonymous, sharing her father's story as a warning to others. John Pomparajas reports. There's just no respect. I mean, no, no embarrassment. Stealing from other people that have worked so hard for what they have. Robbed while trying to make an honest living. This woman tells us her dad is a cross guard at Kate Shank Elementary on the southeast side. On the last day of school, back on June 2nd, around 7.30 in the morning while he was working, someone drilled a hole in his gas tank and siphoned his gas from his truck that was parked just across the street from the school. He saw the guy get off his truck, but he didn't know what he was doing up until my dad started walking up the sidewalk and he noticed he was under his truck. And when he yelled at him, the guy got up, left a gas can, left a piece of the hose there and also uh, a funnel. Security cameras from a neighboring business got video of a potential suspect or blurring his face because we are waiting for official confirmation from SAPD. But he's seen with two gas cans in his hands, as well as at least one, if not more, in the bed of his white pickup. The woman adds in total, the thief cost her father around $300 in damages. We were able to help my dad get everything, the parts or whatever, financially anything that he needed because they are like on a fixed income. So, of course, their bills come first, but, you know, he needs his truck. She says she doesn't think her dad was the only victim that day and fears this person will do this again if he isn't caught. Everybody be vigilant of where you park, you know, just be aware of all your surroundings. Keep your eyes and ears open and we need to just watch out for each other. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Well, SAPD says those thieves used a drill to get inside the victim's gas tank. This case is still under investigation. And speaking of gas prices, well, we've seen gas and inflation. It's hurt us all in different ways, but it's also hurting local organizations who have a mission of helping others. The San Antonio Food Bank serves 90,000 people every week. This rise in prices not making their job any easier. No, it's not. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Eric Cooper, the president and CEO of the Food Bank. Good morning, Eric. Thank you so much for making time for us this morning. Well, oh, thank you both. And good morning, San Antonio. Well, I know that we want to talk about higher inflation and gas prices, but you actually were just in Uvalde yesterday. You guys have been helping the community for so long. You know, what was it like yesterday and why is it still so important to you to go out there? Yeah, Max, thank you so much. You know, you've been out at many of those distributions and to see those long lines of cars is sobering. But to be in Uvalde yesterday at our regularly scheduled distributions, um, to see the volunteers helping that community heal, to hear from those families just how devastated they are and how they're still looking for answers, many of them not knowing where to turn. Um, and so just praying. 
praying for healing, praying for understanding, but it was truly a blessing to be out there. And again, I just want to thank everybody that supports us and in helping to serve that community who, who really needs it at this time. Well, Eric, also on the topic of inflation and those gas prices. So how has inflation and higher gas prices affected the San Antonio Food Bank? Well, for us at the food bank, it's all about logistics. It's getting food from those that have it to those that need it. And so supply chain expenses, things like fuel are a key ingredient into that. And so as those prices go up, it just costs us more to do our business. And where we see the biggest impact is honestly with the families that we serve. Many of them, because of inflation of energy, not just fuel, but utility prices, the fact that it's been over 100 and their utility bills are increasing, their kids are out of school for the summer, um, rent may have gone up. And so their paycheck, it just isn't going as far. Um, many of us have experienced shorts at the grocery store, meaning that there's the items that we're familiar with purchasing aren't available. And many of those items are uh, more costly. And so families leave the grocery store with less food, making up the difference at the San Antonio Food Bank. Oh, we had been obviously working together for years. And when the pandemic first hit, we saw those amazing, unimaginable lines from the food bank. We started to see the need kind of plateau and even go down a little bit. But now with inflation, what does the need look like now for you guys? Yeah, so we're watching it very carefully because I think we were headed in the right direction, as you said. And then, you know, all of these items, you know, and, and whether it's the Ukraine conflict or, you know, infant formula shortage or bird flu or as we've been talking, just overall inflation, it's it's meant that we just haven't had the the supply to meet the demand. And the demand is going up as the economy's kind of feeling these effects. Um, we're seeing more and more families and we want them to know that we're gonna be there for them. I think our strategy right now is just rationing what food we have a, a little thinner to make sure that nobody goes without. So if you can help us at this time, uh, we could sure use the support, whether that's a donation of food or funds or coming out to volunteer at distributions like the ones happening in Uvalde. Um, boy, San Antonio, you've always come through for us, and I think we could really use it right now. And one quick question, Eric, before you go. What special programs do you guys have this summer? Well, thank you so much for asking. You know, kids are amazing, and they should be having fun this summer and not worried about their next meal. And so we have a summer food service program that has food, uh, breakfast, lunch, and uh, afternoon snacks at many locations throughout the city. So if families are in need of that, just go to our website, safoodbank slash summer meals, and you can learn about all the different locations and partners that we have and where their kids can be nourished. All right, Eric Cooper, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you so much for all you do for San Antonio. Anyone who missed any of this interview, we're going to have it all on ksat.com throughout the morning. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Hey. Thank you all. Time now, 8.13, 77 degrees out. All right, much more to come still on GMSA. Oh. We'll tell you about a sweet deal Airbnb has for Scooby-Doo fans. And just ahead, we'll tell you why a graduation in California was canceled mid-ceremony. Imagine those frustrated parents. No, maybe it was just too hot. Can you imagine you graduating? steal the story? <laughs> you just gave away the whole story. <laughs> I don't know. I'm guessing here. I'm playing the guessing game. You don't have to guess about the weather, though. Sarah Spivey has a very hot forecast. We come back. All right, so obviously we know the heat can be uncomfortable and in some circumstances unsafe. In California this weekend, it was so unbearable in an outside graduation ceremony as Sarah said earlier, the ceremony was canceled right in the middle of it. Oh my gosh. So administrators with the University of California Davis had to stop Friday's ceremony because it got too hot. An official says there were 35 oh medical calls 
and six people had to be transported to the hospital. According to the National Weather Service, it was 93 degrees on campus. The high temperature for the day in the city reached a 102. The average temperature for Davis, California is 82 degrees. All right, so yesterday's ceremony was held in the morning and it was one hour long. The students were informed that no one will be walking on the stage. And as you might imagine, well, if you cancel a ceremony right in the middle of it, a lot of students and families upset, frustrated because remember, we're coming off this pandemic. That was the first graduation ceremony in person since the pandemic. But university officials did invite those graduates who didn't get to walk on the stage for a separate ceremony scheduled for today. And it, Sarah Spivey, it's interesting because you hear them say it was 102 there. And we saw 104 here. We did. The and you know what? There is like, it's crazy though. It's yeah, it, it's different because there's no humidity. That's that's a big mm. thing. Different there. Feel. It's a like lot of folks heat. outside of South Central Texas, not totally used to the heat. Of course we are, but today is an exceptional day. All right, we're going to be hotter than usual by quite a bit. So because of that, there's excessive heat warnings and heat advisories in place. Air temperature should be anywhere from 102 to 109. Notice that the excessive heat warning is kind of right along that I-35 corridor where the larger population is a lot more development in those areas, a lot more concrete, a lot more asphalt. So there's a excessive heat warning there across uh, the uh, I-35 corridor. But here's the deal everywhere across Texas, it's going to be hot and dangerously. So there's heat advisories and excessive heat warnings for much of the state and up in Oklahoma as well. This is a look at the forecast highs for the day today across the state of Texas. Everybody's going to be sizzling 107 Del Rio, 105 in Austin, 106 in Junction, 107 in Lubbock, 106 in El Paso. In San Antonio, we're going to be at 104 degrees for the second day in a row, all because of this pesky heat high. It is compressing the air, making the air sink, preventing a lot of showers and storms for developing. Most of the rain is going up and over this high pressure system, and when you compress air, it heats up quickly and that's the case for the day today. Now that heat high is going to move on off to the east. So today and tomorrow are going to be the hottest days of the seven day period. Uh, but even by Wednesday through Saturday, when that heat high moves off to the east, it's still going to be hot. I mean, we are going to shave off a few degrees, so there's some good news there. But 99 is still well above the average of 92 degrees. So the heat isn't going anywhere and we have very little to no chance for rain. On top of that, I want to talk about the fact that Saharan dust is returning making its annual return to South Central Texas right now. Today it's in the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to be pushing up the coast. We often see Saharan dust in the summertime and it's not like a dust storm, but what you see instead is a haze on the horizon. And as you can see, as we head into the week, we're going to start to see this uh, plume become a little bit thicker, especially by Thursday uh, and Friday. So most folks are just going to notice a haze on the horizon, but if you're particularly sensitive to the dust, you may start to experience some allergy like symptoms by Sunday this time next week. Uh, we'll see that cloud thin out. A check on air quality right now. It's it's all right. It's moderate. It's not even unhealthy for those who are sensitive to uh, the dust. So we'll be keeping you updated on the air quality as that plume of Saharan dust is in South Central Texas. But outside right now, it's 78 degrees. It feels like it's 80 outside because we've got high humidity and winds are from the south at about 10 miles per hour. All right, it's 81 in Del Rio, 73 in Uvalde. Wake up temperature in Kerrville of 76, 77 in New Braunfels, 80 in Gonzales, and 79 in Pleasanton. Have plans? Get outside right now because look how quickly it's going to warm up. Temperatures are going to warm to 92 by noon. In the afternoon, we'll be in the triple digits. We are going to have that breeze, so that's some good news. South winds 10 to 15, gusting up to 25, but we'll top off at 104 at 5 and 6 p.m. this afternoon. And even as we approach sunset, temperatures will still be in the triple digits. 107 in Sabinal, 102 in Bernie, 105 in Seguin, 105 in New Braunfels, and 105 in Converse. Everywhere you look, it's going to be very hot today, close to the record. We will be seeing that Saharan dust on the horizon all week long. Temperatures falling by a few degrees and only a few coastal showers possible Wednesday through Saturday. No big chance for rain in San Antonio. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. All right. So. We, uh, we do birthdays on the weekends. Very happy. So we have a special birthday today. Let's see. Can we pull it up? 
Okay, right. no birthday, but stay tuned because we're going to tell you about it a little bit. Time now, 822, 78 degrees out. All right, still ahead on GMSA. We'll tell you about an Airbnb deal that Scooby-Doo fans won't want to pass up. All right, another anniversary celebration happening this month has Airbnb offering three individual one-night stays in the Mystery Machine. So Scooby-Doo fans interested can book a night on either June 24th, 25th, or 26th for only $20 a night. You'll be staying in a rec recreation of the Mystery Machine along the Southern California coastline. This special offer is a tie-in with the 20th anniversary of the live-action Scooby-Doo film released in, oh my God, 2002. Can you believe that? Matthew Lillard, who played Shaggy in the movie, is hosting the stays that include all-you-can-eat snacks, a dinner, Shaggy's puka shell necklace, games, an outdoor hangout space complete with a hammock, and a late-night rewatch of the Scooby-Doo movie for you and your friends. Booking information available on Airbnb's website. If you didn't cry or tear up during the scene when Shaggy and Scooby look at each other, they think they're about to die, and they say, I love you. Aww. Like, you don't have emotions. I haven't seen the movie in about 18 years. Oh, come on, Max. <laughs> Time now, 827, 78 degrees out. All right, still ahead on GMSA, our great grad series continues. It takes us to Pleasanton High School. This student diagnosed with a rare medical condition, but still managed to walk the stage. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, June 12th. Happy Sunday. Thank you so much for waking up with us. And it's another hot, sizzling uh, now, broiler. Can, can I say, like, it's a bro like, broiler mode? We broiler bro mode, yeah. Sure, I like yeah. that. Put it on a graphic. Now, it won't be <laughs> 500 degrees outside, but it will be 104 <laughs> this afternoon. And that kind of heat is no joke. Seriously, please find a way to stay inside if you can. Stay If you have to be outside, shade, fans, Sunscreen, all of that. Okay, let's take a look. They're making fun of me right now. <laughs> no, I'm making no, fun of Sarah fun of because she's Sarah Costa because this. she's doing hand things to turn on the, the broiler. Knob. I was turning the knob. Okay. Turn it the other direction. 78 <laughs> degrees outside right now. And something to keep in mind is that we do have a few clouds out there right now. Although it's 76 in Kerrville, 73 Yavaldi, 81 in Del Rio, those areas are dealing with clear skies. Around San Antonio, the metro area, you can see puffy cumulus clouds, 80 degrees at Stinson, 77 in New Braunfels, 77 in Canyon Lake, and 75. This is the time to get outside because it's quickly going to warm up. Maybe you want to stay by a pool, though, to cool down. It won't be that bad of an idea. South winds today gusting up to about 25 miles per hour. We'll have total sunshine today. By noon, we'll be at 92. By 5 p.m., 104 degrees for the high temperature, just like yesterday. Now, I want to show you something real quick. The UV index is going to be extreme with skin damage time in less than 10 minutes because of the total sunshine. So please make sure to put on that sunscreen. Screen. Here's a look at the forecast highs in your neighborhood. 105 in New Braunfels, 105 in Seguin, 106 in Hondo, 105 in Bandera, 102 in Bernie. Take a look at your screen for a second. I'm showing you the satellite image, and you can see very clearly, here's Africa, that brown tint that you're seeing there over the Atlantic Ocean. That's Saharan dust. It's made its annual trip across the Atlantic, and it's moving into South Central Texas today. I'll show you what that Saharan dust means for our air quality coming up in a bit. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. We're beginning with a developing story in the city's north side. One person is dead and two others taken to the hospital following a shooting involving an AK-47 at a quick trip. So there's been an active police presence going on there throughout the morning. Now, this is happening at Blanco and Loop 410. This is a live look at the scene right now. We have a crew out there. We're being told Castle Hills Police looking over that white vehicle in the middle of the road. Now, this is what we know so far. Police believe three women believed to be in their 20s. They were all shot, as we mentioned off the top, one of them dead, two others taken to the hospital in critical condition. At last check, one of them was actually getting surgery. This was the situation earlier this morning. Well, right now, still no suspect in custody. Now, police say they were alerted that something was happening at a QT when they arrived. They found all three women with serious gunshot wounds. Police say they found 49 to 50 shell casings on the ground and say a 9 millimeter and an AK-47 were involved. Right now, Castle Hills police are investigating, trying to piece together exactly what happened. We'll continue to bring you updates on air and online.
Also new this morning, one person in the hospital after a crash on the I-10 access road coming from Callahan. So take a look. This was around 2.30 this morning. Police say a driver was speeding on the access road, crashed into a white vehicle, which then crashed into an SUV. So three vehicles involved in total. And one of the people in the first vehicle that was hit, well, they were transported to the hospital at last check, stable. Police on the scene say that speed and alcohol were factors in the crash. Charges are now pending the result of a DWI test of the driver who allegedly caused it. Also new this morning, the Bear County Medical Examiner has released the name of a man police say was stabbed to death outside a northwest side bar. The victim, 25 year old Brian Aguilar. San Antonio police say Aguilar and another man were attacked while leaving the Diol Sports Bar and Grill near Loop 1604 and Chase Hill. The other man was knocked unconscious during that attack. Witnesses told police the attackers left in a white Dodge truck. Today marks the six year anniversary of that deadly Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando, Florida. On June 12, 2016, a gunman opened fire inside the nightclub, killing 49 people and injuring 53 others. The tragedy marks the second deadliest mass shooting in America at 2 a.m. this morning. The One Pulse Foundation held a closed vigil in the area around the club for the families of the victims. This weekend is a solemn one across Central Florida. Multiple events are scheduled to be held throughout Central Florida to remember those who died. And across the country and across San Antonio, we saw people take to the streets marching against gun violence. Organizers say in Washington, D.C., 40,000 people turned out for their march. So take a look. March for Our Lives, founded by teens who survived the mass shooting at Parkland, at Florida High School in 2018. Now, their last rally four years ago was for stricter gun control laws, and that attracted one million protesters. The group also coordinated rallies in more than 400 United States cities, covering nearly all of the 50 states. Now, we obviously had a march here in San Antonio. This was the scene at downtown at the San Antonio rally. Now, the local event drew thousands of people protesting against gun violence. The march began at Milan Park and it ended in front of City Hall. This was our second March for Our Lives rally to happen in the Alamo City. This one bringing attention to the Alamo or to the Uvalde school massacre and the Buffalo supermarket shooting. All right, so we, we've seen impressive kids from all over the country competing against each other for the national championship. We actually looked at some of the video of the speed round. I know, it's insane. So among that crowded field of competitors, a San Antonio girl came out on top. She was named the 2022 Scripps National Spelling Bee winner. And after a whirlwind couple of days, our Camelia Wattis got to sit down with the 14-year-old local girl to talk about her experience and how her win came down to the wire. Harini Logan found her passion for spelling watching the national finals, something the 14 year old has done since second grade. Last Friday, it became her turn on that same stage. Your first word is spielbone. S-P-E-A-L-B-O-N-E. Phreatophyte. P-H-R-E-A-T-O-P-H-Y-T-E. Guy Diang. G-A-Y-D-I-A-N-G. I just fell in love with the way how like these big kids, <laughs> cool big kids, uh, were on that stage spelling these words I'd never heard of. Then it was her night on that same stage last Friday after years of hard work. The title of Scribs National Spelling Bee winner nearly slipped through her fingers. She was disqualified for giving a definition of a word that had two meanings. The judges had to go back and review it. And in the vocabulary round, I chose the wrong option, but the option could be construed as correct. Judges reinstated her. I think my nerves had just all kind of evaporated and I was just like, focus, focus, focus. Once back on stage, she won by spelling. Moorhen. M-O-O-R-H-E-N. She beat her opponent in a first of its kind Your spell off. Her competition attempted 19 Steel words bomb. while she attempted 26. It was just so gratifying to see all my hard work and the dedication and that commitment, that especially that time commitment that I've given towards the B to see it finally culminate and pay off. To the young spellers watching her on the finalist stage, she advises them not to let the bad days keep you down. Then you're just gonna like be, feel negative and you're not going to be able to give your best even when you're studying. So be proud of yourself for whatever you achieved, but still use that as fuel and as motivation to give your best coming forward so you can achieve what you'd wanted to achieve. Congratulations. Hey, represents San Antonio. And hey, here's a birthday. Yes. Yeah, so special birthday shout out to Mark, San Antonio guy. Happy birthday. 
We do our birthday shout outs every weekend. So if you have a birthday that you want to celebrate, just shoot us an email. Time now, 839, 78 degrees out. Well, coming up next, we're sitting down with a high school graduate who managed to graduate on time despite some serious medical challenges. Now he hopes to pursue a career in the medical field. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City, 78 degrees. Now, if you have a lot to do today, I would do it early. Try to beat the heat. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. So he missed half of his senior year. He missed his entire junior year. And all of this happened after testing positive for COVID. And that positive test actually triggered a rare genetic blood disorder. This Pleasanton High School graduate has still managed to graduate on time and hopes to pursue a career in the medical field. We're introducing you to a great graduate who is lucky to be alive and walk the stage. Harrison led a very normal high school life, a healthy student athlete who was a high ranking power lifter at the state level. Then spring break of his junior year, everything changed. He tested positive for COVID-19. His symptoms were mild, but a few days later, his health rapidly declined. COVID-19 triggering an unknown underlying disease. And then a week later, I had the stroke and I get ad admitted back into the hospital and my platelets are at 3,000. And from there, I don't remember anything. After several weeks of trying to figure out what was causing his blood platelets to be so low, he was eventually diagnosed with a rare genetic blood disorder called TTP. He was transferred to Houston and spent two more months in the hospital there. He endured two strokes, many blood transfusions and plasma exchanges. His parents by his side the whole time, teaching him how to walk, talk and eat again, even teaching him how to do math again. Without them, I think I'd be in a lot worse place mentally because they've definitely helped a lot and I don't like to talk about it a lot, but when I do talk about it, they're always there and they went through it with me. Once doctors were able to diagnose Harrison, he says he is on a good path to being healthy and leading a normal life with weekly treatments. Even before his near death experience, he wanted to be a nurse, but now he wants to take his future career a step further. That made me want to become a hematologist and specifically study TTP so I could help other people with my blood disorder. His health science teacher, Stephanie Cook, says doctor. she knows he'll make a great doctor one day, especially with his experience. When we talk about scenarios, he understands them. Um, he's very in intrigative, just wanting to really um, not only learn, but then he's also able to um, give his point from a patient's perspective. Wonderful story there. Now I want to talk for a second here about the pollen count. We just got it in. Looks good. Molds are the only allergen present and they're low. We will, however, talk about Saharan dust uh, making its return here in just a bit. All right, today's forecast highs. Look at these numbers. They are very high. 105 in New Braunfels, 105 in Gonzales, 106 in Hondo, 104 in San Antonio, 107 in Pleasanton, 107 in Del Rio. We're going to have pretty much a repeat of yesterday's forecast for us today between the hours of one and seven. You're going to want to find a way to stay cool. Excessive heat warnings and heat advisories all across the KSAT 12 viewing area. You'll notice that San Antonio, New Braunfels, Austin, many of the areas around that 35 corridor are under an excessive heat warning just because higher populations in those areas, a lot more concrete, a lot more asphalt. It's going to feel very hot today, but regardless of whether you're under an excessive heat warning or a heat advisory, today's heat is going to be dangerous either way. Outside right now, it's 78. Eight degrees. All right, this is the coolest part of the day that we're going to have. Dew points are in the low 70s too, so it's very humid. In fact, we've already got a heat index. Feels like 80 degrees. Winds are from the south at 10 miles per hour. Now those winds are going to be our friend today. They're going to provide us with at least some relief in the shade, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. Temperatures out there right now. Waking up in Eagle Pass, it's 82. It's 81 in Pleasanton, 81 in Gonzales, 77 in Kerrville, 79 in Rock Springs. We'll zoom into the metro area here. 78 in Hondo, 75 Rio Medina, 75 in Bernie, 77 in Seguin, and 77 in Canyon Lake. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast staying in the 80s until lunch. So again, not too bad out there right now, but as soon as we turn the corner into the afternoon, it's going to be hot. Uh, we'll be looking at temperatures in the 90s. It'll be 99 at 2, 103 at 4 p.m., and then 104, 5, 6 p.m. during the peak heat of the day. 
even close to sunset, it's still going to be 100 degrees. Sun is going to set at 834 tonight. We'll have breezy winds and temperatures in the 80s and 90s, so it shouldn't feel that bad later this evening. On the satellite and radar, I bet you can spot where that heat high is. All of the rain going up and over this heat high as that dome of high pressure is pushing down on the air, compressing the air, making it hot for all of us around Texas. Now the heat high is going to push off to the east, so we'll shave off a few degrees. Tomorrow we'll be at 101, still hot. And then Tuesday will be at 100, still hot. And even when we fall below 100 degrees by Wednesday, it's still going to be hot. 99 degrees for the high on Wednesday. Something else to look out for this week, in addition to the heat, is there will be haze on the horizon from Saharan dust. Now, the air quality out there is moderate. It's not all that bad. But as we head into uh, this week, we're going to see Saharan dust make a return. This happens every year. If you're new to San Antonio, this happens every year. Dust from the Saharan Desert travels across the Atlantic Ocean and puts a haze on the horizon, mainly in the summer for us. By tomorrow, though, we'll start to notice a little bit more dense and especially in the middle of the week. Now, unless you are particularly sensitive to the dust, you won't notice too much that haze on the horizon. But if you are particularly sensitive, it could cause some light allergy issues and it will see that dust cloud thin out by Sunday. Otherwise, it is just going to be hot, my friends, and we have very little chance for rain in the future, unfortunately. Now, Wednesday through Saturday, a few coastal showers and storms could develop, but Again, the likelihood of those reaching San Antonio is not good right now. So we are in the thick of summer, a little bit earlier than usual. Uh, so let's start hoping for some rain, guys. Max and Sarah. All, All right. right, hot tip, leather seats. Touch it before you sit down there you in go. the car. <laughs> Are you speaking from experience, Sarah? No. <laughs> Time now, 850, 79 degrees out. All right, tomorrow on GMSA, a Marshall High School senior graduates and is ready to step right into a career of law enforcement. Why he says his career choice was a natural fit. That's tomorrow. KSAT 12 celebrates Military City USA, powered by USAA. San Antonio is known as Military City USA, and here at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland is where airmen earn their wings. Inside the base at the Career Enlisted Aviator Center of Excellence, aircrew will learn the fundamentals of transporting goods to our troops. Here's a look at training for the loadmasters. People on the ground can't get their supplies without Air Mobility Command, so we're a part of that, we're a big function in that. Um, so we get the troops, whatever they need, whether that's you know food, whether that's weapons. Loading and transporting some of the biggest assets in the military requires teamwork and extensive training before planning an Air Force flight. You can be up to six pallets on a C-130. Here is one pallet. We got to take care of, you know, exposing these students to to knowing the nomenclature and the procedures to onloading it and offloading it, but doing it in an efficient manner and also uh, in a safely manner. From the real world scenario and they're out there in the world uh, performing their duties as uh, primary loadmasters, uh, they, they'll definitely see more than one pallet for sure. And the news you need to know before you go, Castle Hills investigating a shooting on the north side. Still unclear what exactly led up to the shooting, but we need to know three women were shot, one person dead, the other two taken to the hospital in critical condition. One was rushed into surgery. Now the shooting happened near that QT at Blanco and Loop 410. Officers on the scene saying there were 49 to 50 shell casings on the ground. They say the weapons involved was a nine millimeter and an AK-47. We're obviously gonna be following the story throughout the day, so make sure to stay with us online and more and on air as more information becomes available. If you're planning on being out and about, maybe walking your dog, do it early this morning because over the next uh, several hours, temperatures are going to be rising. We'll be at 104 this afternoon. Way too hot for your pup's paws from about lunch until 7 p.m. It's going to be 105 in New Braunfels, 102 in Holotus, 106 in Hondo, 105 in Seguin, and 104 here in San Antonio. We'll shave off a few degrees here and there. Saharan dust puts a haze on the horizon uh, this afternoon. Hey, thank you, sir. Before we go, I want to give a quick Aww. shout out to my parents, Dan and Patty Acosta. They celebrated 41 years of marriage Yay. this week. Aww. They're in San Antonio watching this morning. Love you guys. Happy, Happy anniversary. anniversary. Have a great day, everyone.